What is up guys, today I'm going to be showing you how you can save your level. And what I mean by save your level is that if you open a door and restart, the door is still open. If you loot the chest and restart, the chest is already looted, that kind of thing. And I'm going to be teaching you this skill by creating checkpoints. Before you watch any more, this video is a continuation from my previous save tutorial. So make sure you've watched that one before doing this one. I'll leave a link in the description. Last thing before we start, a huge thank you to my Patreons for continuing to support me. And Zane, thanks for joining the team. You guys have all been great, so thank you for that. Okay, let's get into this. So the first thing we need to do is fix a problem with our save game and changing levels. So let's jump into our save game and create a new bool variable. And we're going to call this use saved location. Now let's hop into our game mode. So at the moment, we're saving a location and then we're sending our character to that location when restarting and loading the game. The problem with this is that the saved location will apply to all our maps and levels. So we need to tell the program not to send us to the saved location when we're changing levels. So let's move our load game functionality to the right, but let's keep the reference to the save separate. Now let's pull off our save game and bring in our use saved location variable we just made. Then connect this up to a branch with B and click and coming off the true, plug in our load game functionality. So now by changing our use save location to true, we will spawn at the save location. If it's false, we will spawn at the player start. So let's create a custom event called change levels. Then let's duplicate our save game reference, pull off the save game and set the use save location to false. Then let's save game to slot with the same slot name we had earlier and plug the save game reference into the save game object. Now let's move down to the save game and let's move our save game to slot over to the right. Let's pull off our save game and set our use save location to true and connect these up. So when we save our game, we load in with our saved location. When we call the change level event, we load in at the player start. Now, whenever you're changing levels, all you need to do is call your save game and change level events before changing levels. This will save our game progress and then set it so we spawn at the player start in our new level. Cool, now the checkpoints and saving the level. So let's jump back into our BP save game. Add a new variable and call it checkpoint used as type actor and then convert it to an array. Remember, anything you want to save must be stored inside this blueprint as a variable. Now, back into the content browser, let's right click, blueprint, actor, and call this checkpoint. Double click to open it up, and let's add a box collision. In the details, let's turn off hidden in game so we can see it, and then let's jump into the event graph. So, we want the checkpoint to be destroyed if it's already been taken. So off the begin play, Let's bring in a load game from slot node, with the slot name being the same one as we used earlier. Off this, we're going to cast to our BP save game. And then we're going to pull off the save game ref and bring in our checkpoint used variable we made earlier. Then pull off this and bring in a contains item node. Pull off the other input and bring in a reference to self. Then bring in a branch with B and click and connect all these up together. And off the branch is true, we're gonna bring in a destroy actor node. So when we play, if our checkpoint actor is inside the checkpoint used variable in our save game, we're simply going to destroy the actor. Now, click on our box collision and bring in a event begin overlap node. Then let's duplicate the line of nodes we made a second ago by selecting them and pressing Ctrl W to duplicate them. Connect these in coming off the component overlap. So we can disconnect our destroy actor and move it to the side for now. Now, off our BP save reference, let's get another reference to our checkpoint used variable. Then pull off it and bring in a add node. Then off the add input, let's get a reference to self. Let's bring in a save game to slot node with the correct slot name and plug our reference into this 
and connect everything up. And finally, let's bring in a get game mode node. Cast to our BP game mode, then off our reference, call the save game event, and drop our destroy actor on the end of this. So what are all these nodes doing? Well, first we're checking if the checkpoint has already been taken, and if it has, we're doing nothing. Sometimes the begin play, destroy actor, will trigger after we've overlapped the box. So we need this just to make sure we don't get the checkpoint again. Then we're adding this specific checkpoint actor to the checkpoint used variable, and we're saving the game in the game mode, which saves our location. So now we've added our checkpoint into the checkpoint used variable, our contains bool will trigger true. So let's drag some of these checkpoints into our level and test it out. And as you can see, it's all working correctly. So you may be thinking, hey John, you've showed us how to make checkpoints, but you haven't showed us how to save things in our level at all. And that my friend is where you're wrong. Let me break down the steps to save things in your level. So first you add a variable in this BP save game with whatever you want to save in the level. We created a checkpoint use variable for our checkpoint saving. Then in the actor you're saving, you send over the information you want to save to the save game. We did this in our checkpoint by adding our checkpoint to our use checkpoint variable. And the last step is on the begin play to retrieve that save game information and use it to load your actor. So here in the checkpoint, we retrieved the save game information and we used it to destroy the checkpoint if it was already taken. Okay, let me give you some more examples. Let's say you want a door to remain open after opening it. Well, you can do the exact same thing we did for the checkpoint. But if the door is inside the door used variable, we send the door to its open location instead of destroying it. So you can just call your open door event if you've got one, or you can just set the world location to where the door would be if it's open. Let's say you want to pick up a sword and drop it, and this new dropped location is saved for next time you play. Well, for this example, you'll need to store two variables inside the save game the actor reference and the sword's transform, meaning location, rotation, and scale. So what you can do is make a struct containing all the variable information you want to use. Then you can add the struct to the BP save game as a variable. Just create a new variable and type out in the variable type field the name of your struct. Make sure this is an array if you want to do this for multiple actors. And then back on the actor, after sending over the information to the save game, on the begin play, you can use a setup similar to this. You can retrieve the struct variable from your save game reference, throw it in a for loop, break the variable up, and filter it using a branch and an equals node. From there, if the actor is saved inside the save game, you can use whatever information you sent to it. So in this case, we can use the transform to send the sword back to its original position. By using these examples, you can create all types of different saves through your games, and that is it for me guys, if this video helped you it would be super awesome if you could like, comment, subscribe or check out my marketplace asset, that would be so epic. Thank you guys so much for watching as always and I'll see you in the next one.